victory and the second jewel of the triple crown. Steve, one, one thing I've got to ask you during the uh, before you do this replay, I want to know why you went to the lead on this horse so soon because it looked like, I thought anyway, that you were going to take him back. Well, there really wasn't that much speed in the race. Uh, I thought if Believe It wanted to go to the lead or something like that, but no no speed really uh, showed up. Did you know how fast they were going about? Yeah, no, I knew they were going slow, and uh, this around this turn, this horse is starting to get out, so I decided to go on, get to the rail, and uh, try to slow the pace down a little. And so I went on. Which you did a great way. job of doing, by the way. You went the first three quarters about 11 and 2, which is pretty slow. Thank you. So he, uh, when he straightens out on the back side, he starts pricking his ears up, and he's just gallop. He's in a big gallop. And uh, went down, went the real nice. No problems. And I just was... Right here, you're just, just having him relaxed. Really, he's, really, he's in a really nice stride, you know. No problems whatsoever. Uh, now I'm just start. You know, when I get down to the half mile pole, I start, this horse moves up to me and I just, I eased off the fence just a little, you know, to make sure that nothing happened. My horse had a clean trip and I'm waiting for Aladar again, like I said before. And uh, this time he got to me. Yes, he did. He like got to I expected. But you did see him coming. I mean, oh, yeah. you were watching for him and uh, you know, here he is. Now, when you drop this horse down, he must respond like he a does. champion. He does. He's really fires. He's a tremendous horse. Tremendous horse, you say, Stevie, if Steve, I may I, interject. Eddie, you wanted to say something. Yeah, Steve, I noticed you didn't hit him very much today. Uh, you said before, he doesn't respond too much well, in the I didn't whip. Mean, well, that's not what I meant. What I meant is when he's in front by himself and with no competition at all. You've got to keep you, him busy. If you don't hit it, if you're hitting him, I mean, he, he responds to, to hitting. It's, I mean, to keep him on his mind, his mind on his business, but he really doesn't, you know, like some horses, when you hit him, they jump, you know, and just right. take off. Well, he's not that kind, but... You know, just kind of keep him, keep his mind on his business. Keep his and mind on his business. So he doesn't, you know, pull up completely or something, you know. You couldn't have done it better. Thank you. Racing and everybody around you love you, Stevie. Thank you very much. And why shouldn't they? Let's turn and face this camera, Stevie. The final question is, I was about to interject early, you called him a tremendous horse. Of course, realistic horse people know you still have to face the third test, the Belmont Stakes. But do you have a sense now of how great Affirmed really is? Well, you know, um, they're both good horses. Uh, there's not a lot, you know, between them. If there's any, you know, if there's anything, it's uh, like Mr. Arcaro said, the will to win. This horse really, you know, loves to win. He's a very game horse. And is, you know, is the way he acts and nothing bothers him. He's just a, you know, he's a great athlete and tremendous. Super athlete, Steve. Yeah. Yes. Super athlete. Stevie, again, our so congratulations. <laughs> yes, he is. And I love the way he called you Mr. Arcaro. Well, that's Stevie Cawthon, the hero aboard the horse that was the ultimate hero of firm, winning the 103rd Preakness Stakes. Once again, the order of finished with the prices of firm. Three dollars, two ten, two ten. Aladar, two ten, two ten. Believe it for the show at two ten. And America's now most famous athlete, Stevie Cawthon, the winner aboard a firm. This is a goodbye for Jim McKay, our host, Eddie Arcaro, our expert, and yours truly, Howard Cosell, from the Pimlico Racecourse in Baltimore. So long, everyone.